Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of the happiest hour on earth. One of our favorite topics that we've ever had on our show was talking about why we are Disney adults and I know a lot of you also that that resonates with you right you're also a Disney adult or maybe a kid of a Disney adult but tonight we wanted to talk about why there's so many Disney adults I feel like this term really kind of came about in the last couple of decades or so and it started really with the millennials I feel obviously there are Disney fans before that in the different generations but Disney adults loving the parks loving the movies all about Disney that really kind of started with the millennials. So we're going to do like a kind of deep dive, kind of an explanation, trying to figure out yeah. why so many millennials are Disney adults. Mm -hmm. And I think we have some really good points here. And it's going to be kind of like a trip down memory lane because a lot of this started during our childhoods in the, you know, late 80s and 90s. And then also getting into the early 2000s. And so I'm really excited to talk about this because I think it's going to bring about a lot of our favorite things and a lot of your favorite things from your childhood. And so I cannot wait to get started on this. But before we do, if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and click that like button. Hit the subscribe button as well. That would help out our show so much. We do weekly podcasts uh, all about Disney. If you're listening on a podcasting platform like Spotify or Apple Podcasts, go ahead and click that follow button rate us five stars that really helps out our show and so we want to thank you so much for that but let's go ahead and get started all right so before we jump into this topic about why so many millennials are disney adults we're going to actually shout out someone who is not a millennial um <laughs> but still gonna, deserves a shout out <laughs> yeah totally so we were talking to our friend sean from magic king dad uh, a few days back and he said that his son was listening to our show with him. So I just want to give a huge shout out to his son, Cash. Thank you so much for listening to our episodes. And um, I heard that you love Emperor's New Groove. I'm sorry that it didn't be tangled last week but hey we still love still Emperor's New. one of our movie. favorites such it's so thing. much fun yeah, yeah. thanks but for listening cash it really means so much to us for sure and shout out to sean at magic king dad as well definitely go give his page a follow and check out his amazing content but sure. um i think he falls within the disney millennials yeah i'd be surprised so if he's gen x he looks it isn't. He looks like a millennial. Like a day over millennial. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And with that, you know, just a refresher on like what a millennial is. <laughs> what is a millennial? Um, it's who anyone who was born from 1981 to 1996. And so we were born. Towards the end of towards that. Towards the end of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we yeah. grew up with amazing, like D Disney during the 80s the and the prime. 90s. Prime. It was Prime so time. good. It was so good. And that's one of the first things we want to look at is that from 81 to 96, those are the millennial years. However, the Disney Renaissance, which is regarded as one of the best Disney eras of all time, was from 1989 to 1999. So that 10 year period kind of falls right in the middle of when millennials were growing up, mm -hmm. you know, and with the Renaissance, we had the Little Mermaid. Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Lion King, Pocahontas, Hunchback, Hercules, Mulan, and Tarzan. Oh, I mean, some of the best killer movies. list. Yeah. That was when they started going back to like princess movies, mm -hmm. right? Little Mermaid was the first one back before that in the bronze era. They're doing a lot of like animal movies, which were great too. Yeah. But they kind of went back to their true form here. Mm -hmm. Almost like the golden and the silver age, like Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty. Mm -hmm. But they were doing it in a way that was just top notch. They oh had gosh. had Alan Menken and Howard Ashman come in to do the music. So not only were the movies good, but they were going back to like a Broadway style of mm -hmm. music. So it was like those songs were embedded into oh, our yeah. brains as kids. And still to this day. And I feel like they're timeless because even the younger generations after us will always know those songs yeah oh for sure they'll live on forever honestly it was like the best time for disney movies animation top yeah. notch songs incredible stories characters like everything yeah it was perfect and the the era before that the bronze age definitely had some music but it wasn't like sing it was songy different. yeah right? yeah there was a few that were weren't as many that like get caught in your head and you just 
can't get it out of your head. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. Like and that's, these ones. Oof. So many. Good I'm ones so glad there. they went that route because whenever Disney goes that route of like these big Broadway ballad numbers, you know, mm -hmm. those are their best types of movies. Like we've seen recently, oh, yeah. some movies don't follow that, mm -hmm. and they just aren't. Yeah, and there's something about music hard. that is the Disney magic. And and during the millennial years, we had almost every movie: Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin. There was there was Rescuers Down Under. Um, that was at the beginning of this renaissance. That was a good movie, but it didn't kind of feel like all this. But literally, all these other movies, the best songs, epic, moving, emotional, like ah, uh, it's so amazing and so good. And also around this time, too, another thing we have to bring up, right? The Renaissance went from 89 to 99, but still within the um, the millennial years, 1995, that was the start of Pixar movies. Mm -hmm. And so you had, you know, five-year-olds at the time who saw Toy Story for the first time, Bugs Us Life, ish. Monster Zinc. <laughs> yeah, all of, these, all of these movies, and especially those movies right at the beginning of Pixar, mm -hmm. were... I mean, mind blowing. Oh my gosh. Yes. All such great stories. And also it was computer animation, full length movie for the first time ever. So, you know, parents wanted to take their kids to see that. And millennials were like at the theater going age at that time. And so mm -hmm. seeing all those stories were just the best. You said the other episode that what movie was one of the first you saw? I just feel like one of the earliest memory of movies was Bugs Life. Mm, yeah. But I I don't know. I, I'm trying to recall like what my first movie in theaters was, and I feel like it could have been Toy Story. Yeah. Okay, Maybe. so Toy Story, we were two, I think, when that came out. Maybe oh. two to three, right? 95. Um oh, could have been Toy Story oh. 2, Toy actually. Story two. Which I think was 98 or 99. And that would have been yeah, yeah. like five years okay, old. I probably was not seeing um, it too. And you know, with Bullseye and Jesse and all yeah. that stuff, I, I feel yeah, like I think that was similar was. to mine too. My I asked my parents the other day, I was like, what was the first movie I ever went to? And they said Lion King. And I was like, wait, I would have been one years old <laughs> at that time. Maybe I didn't get to see it, but I, I'm sure it was like Toy Story Never or one know. of those, one of those Pixar ones. But we know a lot of Gen Xers, which is right before Gen Z that are not right before millennials mm -hmm. that are huge Disney fans as well. But I think why you see a peak in millennials is that the era before us was the bronze age, not like the best films. Like in there, you also have um, the black cauldron, which is regarded oh as gosh. like one of the, the worst like Disney, Disney movies. Movie. Yeah. But then the era after millennials, when Gen Z was growing up, the post Renaissance, that wasn't the best kind of movies too. You had home on the range in there, which mm -hmm. I just, oh my gosh, we just talked about this. One of our, <laughs> one of our um, guilty pleasures is hating movies that we haven't even seen. We haven't seen Home on the Range, yeah. but it just, I do just not care. I can't imagine that. that it would be anything to write home about. Especially with the movies that came right before being amazing. Now, we do love Stitch, right? Mm -hmm. That was post Renaissance. Uh, yeah, Emperor's New Groove. Groove. Yeah, all <laughs> that. But we were hitting a lull in Disney movies when Gen Z era was kind of born and getting into movies. Also, Gen Z got introduced to two animation powerhouses where when we were younger, we had Disney and that was pretty much mm -hmm. it. We did have movies like Fifle Goes West, like an American tale. One of your favorites when you're a kid. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. What was B. it called? Starts with a B. B. <laughs> Balto. Balto. Yes, of course. Balto. <laughs> Um, yeah, then, that was a favorite. And then Anastasia, there was one, like those were all from different movie studios. What was the one? Cause when you say American tale, I'm thinking of a different movie. That's a little mouse. Yeah. Like but there's sings. one that was similar. Oh, it was called once upon a forest. Oh, um, I haven't seen that one. Yeah. It was, it was another one with like little mice and rodents and stuff. They loved mice back then. It's I a guess lot of, that uh, was a very popular, <laughs> um, animation Forms. Yeah, that's so <laughs> funny. Some of main characters, but it was a favorite growing up. Like, yeah, I think it was 20th century or something. Yeah, I think yeah there there was that right like Thumbelina. I think was in that that I used mm -hmm. to watch that all the time with my sister. But so there were movies. One. There were, but it wasn't like Disney was way. Yeah, know, it was way crazier. But Gen Z when they started watching movies, so 2001, we got another animated studio that just started going crazy. DreamWorks with Shrek and now, coming you know, out strong with Shrek coming out strong. Yeah. And technically Prince of Egypt. No, no. Technically Ants was their first movie. Prince of oh, Egypt was um, soon after that. 
But, you know, they started doing, what is it? Madagascar, Kung Fu Panda, mm. How to Train Your Dragon. Kung Fu Panda and How to Train Your Dragon are so still so big. And, you know, we're seeing them in the Universal Parks. They're building, I you know. Them. I think I've seen oh. How to Train Your Dragon, but I haven't seen the other ones. Oh, yeah. Okay. Kung- <laughs> really? I grew up loving Madagascar, all this stuff. Yeah, but I haven't seen it. That was because Disney was really not making the best movies and making Chicken Little Things like oh, that. Oh, yeah, they were in a slump. Yeah, things like that when DreamWorks was really taking off and everyone was loving DreamWorks movies. And it was it was animated, but it was slightly different and edgier. Mm-hmm. Um, and kids loved that. Now you also had Pixar having the more heartwarming movies at this time, but Disney itself wasn't really. But that's the thing. The generation after us, Gen Z, they had a, more options that were just as good quality and even better than Disney at the mm-hmm. time. So I feel like... There was a break there because they some of their favorite movies are probably DreamWorks, not Disney. Yeah, you know? that's true. That's so interesting. And then yeah. Disney started to kind of pick up steam again a little bit after that, I think. Mm-hmm. When, yeah, you know, I mean, like Pixar was doing the best and then the revival era. I'm trying to remember exactly when that started, but Princess and the Frog, I think, was 2009, mm-hmm. right? That's right, yeah. And so once they started going back to like princess movies, that's when we saw them lifting back up again. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Frozen it's, it's so was interesting. somewhere in there. All, yeah, yeah. Those, those definitely got their fan base yeah. back. <laughs> and you brought up the other day, too, was how the older millennials, so maybe like born in the 80s, right? They grew up with Renaissance. And then by the time that they had kids, Disney was already back making great movies again, like the mm-hmm. revival eras. So to, it was almost like this perfect handoff with millennials and their kids because there was no real slump the the slump of disney movies they were probably not watching disney movies at the time you know they're getting into their teens and yeah you know 20s and stuff like that but by the time they had kids they could show them the movies they grew up with and the revival era movies like frozen and mm-hmm. prince and the frog tangled all that stuff were were great were like yeah. amazing so just very interesting but i think outside of the animated movies we got to talk real quick about live action Disney movies that were actually original. Oh my god. When was the last time we had like a live action Disney original movie that was not yeah, it was not a sequel, not a not a live action adaption. I don't remember the last time we've I had I don't any. even know. It that was, was like, actually good. They created all the best ones back then. Yeah. And just stopped. Saving like, Mr. Banks. That's the only one that comes true. to mind. That was great. But even that is just kind of like the retelling of yeah. a story. It wasn't like something that they just came up with. Yeah, for sure. Like a lot of these. Oh, can you can you give us this list? This yeah. is amazing. So this falls within the millennial time frame and a little bit after because, right, like the later millennials were like 10. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it was, so it's a little bit after, but it was yeah. still geared towards the millennials. Yeah. So many good ones. Like... Newsies in 1992, Hocus Pocus in 93, Cool Runnings in 93, Santa Claus in 94. We were one. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves in 97, Flubber 97, Parent Trap in 98. Classic. Mighty Joe Young in 98, The Kid in 2000. One of my favorites. Remember the Titans in 2000. Princess Diaries in 01, Holes 2003, Pirates 2003, Freaky Friday 2003, National Treasure in 2004. Okay. My gosh. One thing you have to realize, they were putting out sometimes... Three movies in a year. Three movies in a year, and they were all classics. It yeah. wasn't like, oh, this is... Like, uh, one of them just wasn't great. Be- like, those were all so good. And it was almost kind of like when Disney was hitting an animation slump, like these picked that's up true. like true that's so true so there was always something there was you know something good, good coming yeah. out from disney it just wasn't as much the animated side i'm surprised that there was this many original movies like mm-hmm. such fun ones okay yes the parent trap is a remake that's true but it's still it was is freaky friday too technically um i, th- I think, think it wasn't maybe older. yeah but still they they were so the princess diaries long. not princess diaries not yeah holes remember the titans amazing oh my gosh all these so many and then national, national like, treasure their their live action studio was so good at this time it and was now incredible 
we only get like number five of movies or like, yeah. you know, what? live action. Re- like what happened? They literally just had all of their best ideas. Maybe there was one person working at the studio yeah, at the that time had... that just came up with all of these. Actually, there was, uh, I, I forgot his name, but there was the head of the studios at the time. And he was just known for like all these amazing ideas. I forgot who it was. But the other thing we have to think about, too, is we started getting into Marvel here. I mean, they didn't own own Marvel at the time, but they did, you know, in 2009, um, also making moves with Star Wars and all that stuff. So mm-hmm. I think they're they're They had a vision for movies, building out this whole MCU, doing Star Wars and stuff like that. And so it was like these big, big, big movies and universes that they kind of everything else original kind of got pushed to the side. Mm-hmm. Um and then it just stopped. And, and then it just stopped. So I hope we go back to this because this was just such a fun time to it be a was, Disney fan. Oh, my gosh. Was it? They, they were all so good. They were so good. Those, yeah. those are some of my like those movies are like my childhood. Yeah. Like when I think about movies, I mean, you know, also the animated ones, of course. But yeah. when I think of being like a kid to like preteen to early teens, like these define all of that. Yeah. And speaking of that, like kid to teenager like as we not stopped watching animated movies but we were getting a little bit older and we needed you know we needed something else to kind of relate to disney channel disney channel really kind of brought us from the kids kid era of our life to like early teenage with teenage years like even stevens in 2000 Mm -hmm. lizzie mcguire in 2001 that's so raven 2003 Phil of the Future. I actually didn't watch You Did, though, a lot. A 2004. Mm-hmm. Sweet Life. Loved Sweet so Life with Zach and Cody. 2005 in Hannah Montana. And 2006. So it was almost like bridging that gap of, like, the millennials are getting a little bit older. Let's have this these amazing Disney Channel shows. Such and we could relate time. to... Yeah. There was something so special about all those shows. Fun to watch, like, real-life people. Yeah, because you kind of felt like, stuff. like you were their age. And, like, it just... Like you could relate to them as yeah. you watch the shows. And then in addition to all of these incredible Disney Channel shows, there was also DCOMs, Disney mm-hmm. Channel original movies that started in 97, mm-hmm. which was another huge part of my childhood. <laughs> yeah. Like There were so, so many good ones yeah. at that time. Uh, I was just thinking like watching a movie on TV yeah. Like that was so cool. Like on whenever like they showed them and just channel. sitting down and it was just oh kind of like gosh. the start of the weekend or whatever, but I always remember them. Oh, and now you're, I don't I know what like, they said, but like now the movie's about to start and they do their little thing. And you put me back to being like, you got your popcorn ready old. and you're just ready. To yeah. Like them. end yeah. of the week, like Friday, just like scrolling through the channels. And then you see that like one of your favorites is just about to start. Yeah. You're like, my night is set. I'm good here. Oh, like, I'll just be on the couch watching this movie the rest of the night. Oh, it's so good. Such good times. Oh, yeah. Such good times. Uh, there were so many good ones, including Halloween Town in 98, Smart House 99. Scary how realistic that one is now. <laughs> but um, Cadet Kelly, such a favorite. 2002, Get a Clue in 2002, even Steven's movie in 2003, High School Musical in 06. Camp Rock in 08 and then Xenon, which I know that there's two movies of that. And I don't know. We, we didn't write down which. Yeah, we didn't. We were. didn't really get. We weren't actually yeah. Xenon people. I don't know how or why, but I just never ended up watching it. Yeah. I know it was such a favorite of so many people. But but like high school, you think about high school musical and, and Camp Rock. That was like a cultural. Yeah. Like icon you know, know. that was well, it's what brought just, us basically Demi Lovato the Jonas Zach, Brothers yeah Jonas Brothers Zach Efron yeah all that, that stuff like all their starts and that that was just like one of the biggest things in like the Disney teen community at the time mm-hmm. and so I don't know it's just it's not just a movie it was like a whole yeah a whole movement I mean they had like how many high school musicals like three two two, two three. I thought maybe there was three I can't remember um, but then there was like a there was a Camp Rock too. Yeah. There was all that stuff. But I mean, it was just, it was just perfect timing for every, everything as a millennial. Yeah. And I think Descendants is kind of the new like show now that everyone watches and that's supposed to be really good. You know, we kind of fell out of the 
the Disney Channel shows, except for yeah. Bluey, which is now uh, <laughs> Disney. But yeah, 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 that is that is still amazing. Um, Such a good one. But I mean, I just think it was so perfect at that time. Plus, kids these days now, like they have their phone, they watch like YouTube video, they watch like people playing video games like entertainment has changed so much yeah, but we okay. what we had for our entertainment was turn on the tv sit down and watch mm -hmm. where today it's like yeah you have youtube you have your video games and all this stuff we had video games too but it was so much more of a spectacle with sitting down and watching tv because mm -hmm. there wasn't much else to do to do so that was like that's how we did family time thing. yeah and that's how like me and my siblings would connect a lot of the time with our disney channel shows it was like the TV was the thing yeah. <laughs> when we were kids, I feel like. So I think it's harder for Disney to really capture audiences today. Mm -hmm. um, they have to think of other just mediums. So much, yeah. yeah. We just have a few more here. Another thing that was crazy was not just the visual, not just the shows, the, the mm -hmm. movies, live action and animated, but also... The parks were going crazy at this time. We had Epcot opening in 82, Hollywood Studios in 1989, Animal Kingdom in 1998, and then California Adventure in 2001. And I know that original California Adventure was nothing special, but it still came out. And it's so still new one, and two, fresh three. at the time. Yeah. Four parks, four U.S. Disney parks opened up during the millennial years yes animal kingdom 98 and 2001 for dca mm -hmm. were outside of that but those millennial kids were like perfect age to go to the park so oh, for sure um so there was just like such a exciting boom of new things to actually experience and it just lined up so perfectly with the movies because all the kids were loving the best of the best disney movies that were coming out with the renaissance mm -hmm that you needed to be surrounded by the parks, you know, you yeah. needed to go and experience it. And it, you know, you, you put on those one, those old Dis Disney VHSs and you're about to watch the movie. And then there's a commercial for the parks about mm -hmm. there's like kids getting ready oh to finally gosh. go. I Everything was those. booming. It was so like, so you just good. had to go. And you obviously told your, your parents like, look at those kids are going to the parks. And then said so they obviously took you and yeah. And there was new stuff happening. So it was just perfect for the millennials. It really was. Yeah. It was such a good time, even though I I only went like really once as a kid, kid, mm -hmm. and then started going regularly when I was like a young teen. But yeah, I still, you know, I still remember those commercials yeah. so well. And really my gosh, just thinking about it, it's like. I just remember that excitement seeing those come on and be like, I wish that was me. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You know, like, I wish I was getting up and packing my bag in the morning. Like, oh, those were the so best good. times. It was such fun so times. Amazing. Yeah. Um, and then the last one here, it might seem like nothing, but honestly, I think it is very important. The last one here is that Disney stores opened in 1987. And you guys know what it was like if you're a Disney millennial walking in the mall and looking over to like the left or the right and seeing this huge Disney store sign mm -hmm. with the figurines, like the, the, you know, Mickey and Minnie and Pluto, they're all like hanging up on the, um, yeah. kind of like on the ceiling or high yeah. up and just seeing that and all the stuffed animals and all this stuff. And it was tying in the, the best of the Disney movies, the parks booming, all this stuff. And saying, hey, if you if you miss this or you love this so much, you could bring it home. Mm -hmm. And so that like created a huge connection, I think, with millennials who are now Disney adults, because you would go and you would find your favorite stuffed animal and all this stuff or your your favorite like new toy. Consumer products were just like booming at that time. You think mm -hmm. of Woody and Buzz oh, bringing yeah. them home um, with Toy Story. Yeah, I mean, it, it was just perfect. It was just like the perfect handshake of like movies to like incorporating that yeah, into your they were just, just their reach was far at that time they were yeah. just expanding any way that they could and yeah. they did so well with it and then like not too long ago so many disney stores closed but they're like reopening now right they're, yeah so they changed it back from shop disney to the disney store i forgot if they are actually going to be hope or opening up stores again um i, I think i so. did hear something about that but we live in a digital world where it's so nice and convenient that you could just order something online and get it. But there is but, nothing like walking around a Disney store 
Yeah. Watching movies play in the background. Yeah. The some music. of them were done so well, like so big, so much space and like, yeah. I don't know. I've always loved walking around in the Disney stores. It was even a, little it a little slice chaotic. of the Disney parks in your town. Yeah. Always, it's, always a favorite thing to do. I tried working at the one close to where I lived when I was like I a young that. adult. Yeah. So many times, never got a job there. But I was like, if I could just be here immersed in all this Disney, yeah. like I would be so happy. <laughs> but and Disney music all day. Oh, yeah. so crazy. Nothing really replaces that. And I know that they started putting a lot of that stuff into targets and stuff, which is yeah. also great, but like, yeah, still not quite the same. Such yeah, a tiny for sure. little like section in Target. Yeah. 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 But it, I mean, it, it made you feel connected to Disney in a way. Everything was just working together. There's like synergy, Yeah, you know, movies, TV, mm-hmm. music. The stores, the parks, everything was just incredible at it was, that time. It was the perfect time yeah. for Disney. And growing up with all of that was awesome. It really was. It's, uh, Disney has changed so many times over the years. I guess I'm just thinking movie-wise, like the movies really have just kind of gone like this. Like there's mm-hmm. really good times, there's not so good times, and so on and so forth. But yeah, being alive, being young when they were at this time. This, yeah, yeah. You, you know what's best. interesting is that like usually you would think with no competition you would get lazy and you wouldn't be making the best of the best. But now I've been seeing that Disney has so many competitors right now. Yeah. And so it, it's harder. Like, you know, you're trying to pump out movies and all this stuff, but you have DreamWorks. You also have the parks. Universal is going crazy with the parks. So they're trying to no compete kidding. with the parks. They're trying to compete with the movies. Um, when it comes to TV, it's like streaming services now rather than... You know, just putting on your TV, also like entertainment, mm-hmm. like they have to think about video games a lot more now and like other forms of entertainment rather than just like toys. So it's like there's so much vying for our attention nowadays yeah. that they're trying to pump things out and trying to figure out like what to do. And I think this is the perfect time for Universal or anyone like that to like kind of swoop in. Yeah, it's like they have the they're gaining momentum so quickly mm-hmm. that like if Disney doesn't. You know, they gotta do they have to do something. But I miss those days where Disney was just like top dog. And I think they're still top, top dog, game. but yeah. it's not as like the separation yeah, is so getting little, thinner. Little, yeah, it's a little wonky at the moment. Things yeah. are a little more skewed than they were at this time. For yeah, sure. but it it makes me reminisce. And you know, with all the amazing movies, we could still watch them. We could still listen to all the amazing mm-hmm. music and just and it remember that height of Disney. Yeah, oh, so good. We literally. Watched two Disney movies over the weekend, which like never happened. Yeah. But we were just we like in the mood for it. and then um, live action Beauty and the Beast. Oh, live, yeah, that's right, that's right, yeah. Um, which are um, both great. I forgot how beautiful Pocahontas was. It's been a while gosh. since we watched it, but man, every scene is like a watercolor painting. Yeah, it's stunning. It's so beautiful to watch. The colors mm. are. The Colors of the Wind. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's just so good. I love that movie so much. It's so beautifully you done. You could do that more, making beautiful scenery with 2D animation. Mm-hmm. Rather than the animation we have today is so great and looks awesome. But you can't really do too much abstract, like, watercolory, like, oh. background scenes, making them all beautiful. Because you have to make them realistic in a way, you know? Yeah. So. But it'll always be my favorite. I know. See me. I would then. love if they go back to some sort of 2D animation. I would too. It's um, like, yes, shake it looks up the game a little bit. More yeah. realistic now, but it was still better then. Yeah. Like it just, it like, I don't know. It, there's something about it that just grabs your attention so much yeah. more, I feel like. So good. So amazing. Ugh. Okay. Well, we we could go on all night <laughs> really talking good. about this, but we want to like reminisce with you guys. If you're, if you're listening on, on YouTube or watching on YouTube, let us know in the comments, like your favorite part about being a millennial in this time. If you're not a millennial, if you're a Gen Z or Gen X, let us know your favorite part about being a Disney fan in that, you know, that I was almost said era, but that, um, <laughs> generation generation. Yes. Yeah. We'd love to chat more Disney with you. It's always so much fun. Yeah. Oh, it's so great. No matter um, what generation you are, you can appreciate all the generations of Disney. Yeah. But yeah, there was something special about 
our our millennial time frame. Yeah, and that is why there's so many millennial Disney adults. But so fun chatting about this with you guys. Like I said, definitely let us know your favorite part about Disney within your generation. Mm -hmm. um, we'd love to hear from you. But thanks again for listening to our show, and we will catch you all next week. See you next week, guys. See you guys. Bye. Bye.